Deep in the ocean, an orca pod is on the hunt. But these aren't your average orcas. These guys are organized. Marketing team, did you get those social media posts scheduled for the seal migration? Aye, aye, Captain. We even have an automated notification for all pod managers when they go live. They use Monday.com to keep their teamwork sharp, their communication clear, and their goals in sight. Monday.com. For whatever you run, even orcas. Go to Monday.com to dive deeper. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring around the star attraction. The one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ms. Judy Gold. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Kill Me Now. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I just, it's just embarrassing because, you know, I take the subway here and I'm having a hot flash. Schmitzing. I'm schmitzing. schmitzing. Like, it's so bad. The 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 fact that the subway is not AC'd or at least fanned. Right. It's like, and I'm just like, come, please come car. And then you get in the car. Yes. And, you know, there is a. 30% 30% chance it's going to be not air conditioned. And yes. there yes. might be a homeless and then, person. In and there. then at the next stop, you right. run to try to get to a, right. a train car yeah. that is air conditioned. And you got to run. Then, you, yes. you know, sometimes the and train comes. And I'm like, wow, there's no one in there. Yay. But yeah. all the other trains are really. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes. There's no seats in the other trains. And it's either like a smelly person or. Yeah, it's heated. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't recognize that voice, then Which you you're don't. an asshole. No. Yes, they do. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're My comedy voice is fans. So distinctive. Yes. Oh, Ladies wow. and gentlemen, I've been dying to have this guy on. The incredible. Gary Goldman is here. Oh, thank wait, you. Oh, wait, I forgot. Because Thanks, Ju. Gary Goldman. That's our oh. Jew bell. Oh, really? Yeah, That's we have hilarious. anything remotely Jewish. I love that. The bell rings. Because, I you know, we that. need to remind people how much we contribute. To the world. Oh yes. You know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. I'm all. I'm always doing that. Yes. I've, yeah. I've, um, I've gone out of my way over the years. Really? Yeah. Do you feel like Jewy? Yeah. I'm very. I'm. I very know Jew-y. you're Jewy. It, yeah. And and it it um permeates my my very being. Yes. yes same. All the same. time. Same. All and the I, negative and I, and I, things. And they want you to feel guilty about that, but right. I, I I won't. But what about the fact it. that we're really? I lean in with my big yeah. Jew nose. What about the fact that we're really tall? Oh, Jews. Yes, yes, that were outliers. Now, when you went to synagogue, yes, like we were the tallest family at yeah. my synagogue. Well, my family isn't tall. It's really? Just me? I'm, no way. Yes. Yeah. We're we're not. The Goldmans aren't aren't that tall. Yeah. Well, how so did that happen? I have, I have no idea. I, I guess my my mother's father, who who died before I was born, was very tall. But is that who your name is after? Than that, uh, Yes, my middle name is is, is Lewis. Is Lewis? Yes. Oh, I do research. <laughs> I do research, Gary Lewis Coleman. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um. So he was tall, but like, how tall are your brothers and your um, parents? And... My my middle brother is about six feet, and the other brother is about five ten. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I'm taller than both of them. Yes. Yes. Are they so jealous of you? Um. I think the oldest one feels his right. life would have been different had he had my height because he was he was a, a tenacious aggressive guy but he right. was small and, right. and and I'm I'm very passive. Oh, yeah, you're so guy. handsome. <laughs> you're cute. All right. So you were born in wait, West Peabody. Yes. Oh Not even gosh. Peabody. Well, West Peabody, actually, Massachusetts. West, West Peabody is a designation that the West Peabodyites have developed. Oh. It's, it's not actually a separate, oh, so it's Peabody, separate area. But you're, uh, West Peabody is, uh, it's, if you lived there, you'd be like, oh, Jew. All the Jews lived. It, oh, lived so it's in, the it's the West Jew. Peabody. It's the little Israel. Of yeah, Peabody. because it was within walking distance of the, the synagogue. synagogue. Yeah. Which, what was the synagogue? Yeah. Uh, well, the name of it is Temple Near Tamid, but because mm. it was up a hill from a Chinese food restaurant, it became Temple Temple Near Chef Jang's. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was up a hill, so if you if you threw right. your car into neutral, you could on on Yom Kippur coast. You could into coast the down. Lot. Oh, that's yes. great. Yes. And then, did anyone break the fast there? Everyone broke the fast there. That's yes. hilarious. Yes, it was it was a brilliant well, move the by the Chinese. Really yeah. <laughs> um, and you know the Chinese, you know Asians and Jews. I did this thing for um, the Food Network once. The reason we love their food is because they 
you know, they're they're outliers. Right. They don't really um, mix meat and dairy together. Oh, I didn't realize that. That, that, um, that, that makes sense. And we usually ended up on the same. We felt the same, like that we were like, you know, oh, we looked different and we were usually yeah. on the same side of the tracks. Yeah. And same sort of education, family. Yeah. Do you think they like us? Yeah, I don't know. Don't you think everyone hates us? Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. That's no. my mother, constantly. <laughs> they all hate us, yes. Judas. Yes. Everyone hates yes. us. Yes. Like... Yes. And, you know, I used to be so like, no, no, everyone. <laughs> and everyone fucking hates us. Yes. And it's that, that well, Bernard Malamud um, uh, quote. Uh, if you forget you're a Jew, a Gentile will remind you. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> and your girlfriend's not Jewish. No, no. She's a, a young black woman. But does she? Um, she doesn't hate Jews, does she? No, All no, right, no. She she appreciates Jews. All right, good. Yeah. Um. So you're 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 in and West refers to all the headgear that she wears, and there is a lot of headgear involved as yarmulkes in, in, in having um, mm -hmm. an afro and whatnot. Yeah, she refers to them as shmatas. Oh, I love yes. her. <laughs> yes. She's How long lovely. have you been with her? She's, Four years. First of all, she is one of the hottest women oh, I've she's ever seen. Gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm allowed to say because I'm a yeah, lesbian, of course, but yeah. Uh, yeah. she is so and so nice. So nice and so smart. Where she's did a, you meet she's her? A woman at the comedy cellar. You did not. Yes, she was friends with uh, Karen Margolis, who was a hostess and, okay. Jew, and a Jew as Mark. Oh yeah, Margolis. The, the yeah, hostess, sorry. Um, at the comedy cellar for a while, and she was friends with her, and she would visit, and I would, I would um, chat her up. Yeah. Oh, so it wasn't like you did a set, no, and then she's no. like, "Ah, you're <laughs> no, 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 like no. every other guy comic." Yeah. Um, so you have two brothers. Are yes. you the youngest? Yeah, I'm the youngest yeah. by by ten years. So yeah. you were a mistake. Probably, probably, and yeah, yeah, and it was pretty much like being an only child. Right. That, yeah. That same. I'm yeah. the youngest, but they're yeah. But what, by the time I got to high school, they were both gone. Yeah, me too. Um, by the time I was in in seventh grade, I think. So your parents divorced when you were a baby. Yeah, one and a half. Yes. So they got more of your parents together than you did. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. Oh, I know. I know. I never knew my parents together. Yeah. Yeah, because Ben, my little one, doesn't remember us together, but uh, my older one does, and uh, okay. he's the more emo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Yeah. And I'm the I'm the emo. Yeah. And they do, they don't. Yeah. They don't accept that. They just deride me for being so sensitive. And no, but that's yeah. the best part of you. <laughs> it is. Some would say yes, but they. He's so sensitive. He's ultra sensitive. He oh. can't say anything. We have to walk on eggshells. Oh, shelf. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my, and my mother used to always say, for someone who's a comedian, you really have no sense of humor, <laughs> Judith. <laughs> can't say anything. I know. And the, and the uh, what do you want us to walk on eggshells? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, I yes. do. I want you to walk on eggshells. You look what you did to me. <laughs> yes, yes. Parse every word yes. you say. Yes. Wow, one and a half. That's such a, uh. Yeah. So he would come on the weekends? On Sunday. Yeah. And then I, On you know, Sunday I do try to undo everything my mother had done during the week. Right. Yeah. So that's so because it because you were born in what 1970. So that's yeah. like yeah, that was divorce then. Like guys yep. didn't fathers didn't really get right. Do you yeah. think he would have? No. You don't no, think he would have asked my, for more? No, that wasn't my dad. I mean, he did his best for that time, and right. I think he was outstanding for that for that time period. But but guys of that era were not yeah. were not hands on right. fathers. He wasn't changing any diapers or making right. any. Oh, meals. my father yeah. did. Really? Yes. Wow. My father. What was his name? Harold. Harold Gold. Wow. And he was born in 1916. Wow. He'd be 102. Oh my word. He was like 48 when I was born. Yeah, my father was 46, I think. Oh my God, we have so much in common. <laughs> And but he he did stuff like he did chores. He wow. I remember he always polished the silver. Oh uh, he gardened. We hit. We had a huge vegetable garden. Uh, oh, we, that's he did. Awesome. He was a he was from a different generation. But yeah, um, what a beautiful man. He was great. Yeah. Um, and he would come, your father, at noon, and then yeah, he would yeah. leave I when would, sixty I would sit minutes. In the window. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When 60 minutes, I, when I heard that, my heart sank. Oh, really? Because, uh, you know, I mean, I feel 
I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I have such a kinship to you because of, you know, I'm bombastic and loud and, but I am so overly, I mean, I am really sensitive, yeah. especially yeah. to, uh, sounds and, um, music wow. and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. and this so, is so interesting when you, this is a mirror. Uh, it was just when I, when you, just knowing that you, when you hear that, that it just, I can just feel the, yeah. oh my God, the dread, oh you know? Oh my gosh. Do yes. you ever watch that show anymore? Uh, ever? Um, no, I, I, I don't be, because um, I, 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 it's, it's it, even 60 Minutes is kind of tabloidy. Yeah, you know? I know. Yeah, it's not what it once was. I prefer Frontline. Oh, I love Frontline yeah, on, on PBS. Yeah, and, that's and, a yeah. yeah. And, there, and there's so so many better podcasts that I yeah. rather listen to than than. But you get minutes, like so, a ting but, every oh, time yeah, you when I, when I hear it. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it just it it brings me back. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. But sounds, right. yeah, and music sounds and, and music. And, yeah, I think that's why we're comedians too, because it's all auditory. Yeah. You know, we like you know. that that Beatles song, "A Day in the Life." <sighs> The opening I know. to that song. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, I heard you say you definitely, and I'm the same way, Beatles over Rolling Stones. Like, oh, I don't yeah. think there's a comparison <laughs> no, at all. No, not at all. Like, I never got. I mean, I liked some of the Rolling Stones songs, but yeah. I never got the whole, you know, right. they're the greatest thing. No, the Beatles no. Yeah. Yeah. are they, fucking amazing. Yeah, they're like a separate, uh, they transcend music. Right. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever think about switching insurance companies to see if you could save some cash? Progressive makes it easy to see if you could save when you bundle your home and auto policies. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Okay, so you uh, decide that you know, you go to school and that you, I guess, don't want to be average. You don't want to, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, and I, right. yeah. and I feel the same exact way, yeah. th like that I'm worthless unless, right. unless I'm great. which is the worst. Yes. When you're a comedian, it's like the worst thing yes. in the world because, you know, a lot of it is outside of you. You oh know, a gosh. lot of your success. Yeah is outside no control. and I feel like you know I've been doing this for so long so I finally gotten used to you never quite get used to it but I finally gotten used to all right this will pass this will pass yeah. but as I get older I'm like maybe it won't pass because right. yeah I'm a woman over 50 you know so yeah. it's but I, I had a, a revelation this year. I, I I'm I'm not the biggest Springsteen fan. Oh, I love yeah. Well, uh, from as far New as Jersey. Like, I, yeah. I, I I love all his hits, but I don't know the deep cuts that well. Right. And and um, and I go to his concerts and I right. I, I love him, but I, I I don't know. I'm not as big a fan as some people right. are. But I I read his or I listened to his Audible. Oh, I wanted to download it because oh he gosh. does it. Is he it does great? it? It's my favorite thing he's written. Really? Yes. <laughs> Even more than all the songs. But it's like $50. No. Oh, it's cheaper now? Oh, yeah. Oh, I went to download yeah. it when it first came out. Yeah. it's it's uh, anyhow, Everyone it's says it's amazing. But he talks about not being able to get out of bed at right. one point in his life. And my idea was that if you got to the level of even Paul Simon. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or Billy Joel. Not Art Garfunkel. You, no. okay. <laughs> that was a little more. Or Bob Dylan. Right. You would be able to get out of bed. Right. Because you would want to spend the right. day as Billy Joel. And so I just thought, work harder. And right. And feel good about yourself. Right. And I'm just not working hard enough. But right. nobody works harder than Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I know. Even even James Brown. James Brown took a lot of time out right. to, to abuse people. Anyhow, he couldn't get out of bed. And then he took antidepressants and he felt better. Right. And I thought... First of all, well, Butrin is, or whatever he was on, is yeah. more effective than being Bruce Springsteen. Right. Which is remarkable. Right. And it's chemical. It's not. Oh, my God. It's so chemical. And I was convinced right. by everyone that this was just how it is. 
if you do something great, you'll feel good about yourself. Until then, I always thought keep that working. Too. Yeah. And and it just it it I, I mean it didn't cure me, but it it made me stop blaming myself for right. feeling so terrible. Right. I, I yeah. think until I had. I had a very bad clinical depression in 2010, and that was a major turning point in my, I mean, I've always been anxious and always, and I realized then I've always been depressed yeah. and, you know, but I I feel like I went to the doctor, I looked at my, I was so skinny, that was the only good thing, but anyway, <laughs> uh, but if you look at my blood work from that time, I'm deficient in wow. like so much like I, I'm physically deficient. Wow! And it was, it's, it's definitely yes a physical thing. Yes, we're very into that in this podcast. We're very into mental health. Oh, um, good. It's so important. I know, and it's nobody so talks about it. More people are talking, talking about, about it, it now. now, and I think that comedians have always been on the cutting edge of that. I remember right. in 1993. I don't know if you've ever worked with this woman. She passed away, but she was, she was more of a local comedian. Her name was Barbara Swanson. Did you ever? Oh, that work sounds, with her? Uh, sounds a, familiar. She was a, a lovely woman. Yeah. And and I remember I was first starting out as an open micer and hosting these shows, and she talked about being on on antidepressants, and I was like, oh my gosh, can you? I believe can't believe this she's talking. Yeah. Is talking to strangers right. about being on antidepressants. And it was like nothing to her. And it, right. And it, but it, yet it but was that's such a brave the, right. move. It's like and coming it out of comedian. the closet. Yes. 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 And it's so so important. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, and especially for men. Yes. Because I used to, when I was in college, I used to sneak into my therapy appointments. and then So no one would see you? So nobody would see me. And then back out of the office and say, oh, wrong door. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Stupid. I started going to therapy at 18. 18, yeah. 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 But I was like, I'm going to therapy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. What college was it at? Rutgers. Oh, nice. Yeah. I used to go to the counseling center. I was there all the time. Yeah. Um, so you, 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 you're, you're a kid, and you re I guess you were an adolescent. You were bar mitzvahed, right? Yes. Yes. June 4th, 1983. And how'd you do on that? That's your bir first big performance. Really. Yeah. You know what? I killed, but it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of stock material. It was it was it, it, <laughs> I it was it. yeah, it was it was it was not very creative or, Did you? or original or anything. Yeah. My, my neighbor Margie Graff helped me with my speech. Right. She she wrote all the good lines. And, right. And she was she was lovely. She passed away, of course, at fifty two of breast cancer. Oh like, rest yeah. in peace, Margie Graff. Oh, what a lovely woman. I can't fuck Just, I, why is I, Trump alive? Oh I know. I, I told like people like that. That was the first thing I learned about life at like 11. Right. Assholes live forever. Right. Yeah. My mother always said that too. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're like 12, 13, you're like, I have to be extra special. Like, is that what Earlier happened? Earlier than that, like nine or 10. Really? Yeah. What yeah. Do you, where do you think that came from? Just, I felt lousy. I know. I, uh, I felt lousy. But were you popular? No, no. I had a, I had a, hard time making friends because I was so weird and here's a, here's another uh, really bad move my father who saw me for three hours a, a week right. we, we would play Monopoly and throw the ball around he was yeah. he was doing his best he felt that I should repeat the first grade based on on some sort of idea maybe that I would excel at sports or or t some idea he had and he fought right. with the principal and the teachers who insisted that the, I, my, I was in the top reading class right. the top math class right and had Jill. me repeat the first grade. Yeah. And and it it undermined me. And, and um, Ew, he had and, you repeat yeah, it? And, and then everyone and was like, why is Gary? They and mocked me and teased me. And I was with kids who were less mature than me. And I didn't really connect with them. And, right. Uh, yeah. And it, and it just... Uh, it, and and I happened to have a, a teacher who was really sarcastic and a bully. And, and, and that really made me feel terrible. Right. And, and so that's where the... The dread of school started. Before that, I was I was a really bold, precocious kid. Right. And after that, I was that's terrible. They insecure. do that with boys and, a lot. Yeah, and and um, self conscious. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's I sucks. was just I hated school because that's when I first felt depressed. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, after that, I that hated really, going to school. Oh, I hate when it. that alarm went off in the morning. Oh my gosh, Judith! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> Because I knew the minute I walked in the school, it'd be Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Oh, it was really? the whole oh, fucking Judy. day, oh, all day God. long. Wow. It was awful. So, Thank God they didn't have social media. Oh, of course. 
That's why I'm fearless, I think, on stage, because it's like you cannot humiliate me. You can't say anything to me that I have not been listening to. I, yeah. I've said this numerous times on the podcast. I did not walk by a schoolyard until I was in my 30s. <laughs> when I was living, you know, I'd live in New York and I'd see a schoolyard and I'd walk across the street because I was hilarious. like, I thought they would start. Oh my gosh. It's horrible. Of course. It is horrible. Um, but nobody has your stage presence because of that. I guess nobody because, has yeah. The greatest straight stage presence in, in comedy. Gary! Yeah, I was I love talking you. about that with, with the um, uh, Jared from Bloomington. In, I love Jared. Oh, yeah. no, he's not Jewish. He's out of his mind, too. <laughs> he's so interesting. I know. He's eccentric. Yeah. yeah he love loves him. the Beatles, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> comedy attic is one of the best rooms in the country. It's incredible. Yeah. It's And he doesn't run. give yeah. a shit how many, you know, like, how many people drink or, you know, yes. he is so yes. into the comedy. Yes. I adore him. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Except Henry um, goes to IU, you know? Oh, yeah. And he texted him for a job, and then he never... Henry's like, he definitely read it, and he didn't bring me back. No, we don't know that. Well, he said Try he had again. a reading receipt. He uh, said, uh, yeah. Uh, Whatever. I love Jared. Um, yeah. and Henry's a pain in the ass sometimes. But I love you, Henry. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh, Henry's Jewish. Um, okay, so you're in school, then you... Like, you could be a basketball player. I did play basketball yeah. in high school, yeah. But you ended up on the football team. Did one of the coaches come up to you? Yeah, there were these, yeah. There were these twins. They were 28 years old, and they were really handsome They were the coaches? With long hair. Like the Winklevosses? That's <laughs> yes, the Winklevoss, yes. Yeah, the Winklevoss um, coaches, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were really handsome guys, and they saw me in gym class, and I was... I could dunk a basketball, and they were like, you're wasting um, your talent. If you play on the football team, we'll get you um, newspaper articles and a scholarship to play football. And, oh, well, and, that's, and, yeah. Um, the love of your school classmates and, right. and girls. Adoration, yes. sex, yes. popularity. Yes, yes. I was. I had never kissed a girl at that right. point. And, um, and you I, didn't get, did you go to summer camp? I went to basketball camp. So You all, did? Oh, so it was, oh, all, so all, it was boys. all boys. Yeah. And then nothing at your bar mitzvah? Like, no. don't they all get blowjobs at the bar mitzvahs? Oh, my. Maybe they do now, but, but yeah, I, think I they didn't. Do now. I was a nebbish. I was a nebbish. I was oh, a nebbish. me yeah. too. Yeah. But, so so they... they. You, I can't believe you were a nebbish because you're so handsome and <laughs> tall and like... It's, like you don't seem yeah. nebbishy to me at all. Yeah, I was like, it's, yeah. It's it's what keeps me from being completely insufferable. Yeah. I think because I think if I had grown up with with that type of entitlement, right? That, that Forget great it. Looks, yeah, I didn't. I didn't really. Yeah. Fill out or anything like that until I was eighteen years old. But these these guys saw me in gym class and then they said, "We'll we'll train you." And on the first day of of summer they called me at, at like 6 30 in the morning said meet us at this gym in salem mass where the witch trials took place right and i went there and they trained me every day for like six or eight weeks just you just me the winklevoss twins and yes. you yes yes and then i went out for the football team i mean like wasn't your mother like gary i don't know i don't trust these people my mother um was yeah was completely skeptical about this thing really and, and thought it was was insane but i but the one thing i will say is that she recognized how much effort i had put right into right it right and, and she didn't she didn't um uh force me to to give it up and right, also right. my a friend of mine the night before football practice started i told my best friend i was like i i, I can't do this they're, they're gonna murder me tomorrow right morning. right and he was i, I said i'm gonna tell them that i that i have the second thoughts i'm yeah. not gonna do it and he said they will kill you yeah right after you went for how many <laughs> yes, weeks yes and they took you to breakfast every morning what did they <laughs> what did you. they do like what did you do in your workouts um we would we would lift weights and then they would teach me how to run uh, passing routes and, right. and things like that and throw me a, a football. And um, then they would give me like these these really great pep talks that I had never gotten in my right. life. Nobody like built what? me up like that. I would just ask questions like, um, and do you guys do you guys think I'll um, I'll get to play in the games? And, and they were like, fuck yes. And they were just, they were just so positive right, and right. optimistic. And, and, and yeah, and everything they predicted came, came true. Came true. Yeah. And were, d even though, like when you were meet, like you were filling out and getting muscular, yeah, did you I went, get more I went popular? From, I went from two hundred to two forty. Wow! In, in one summer, it was it was remarkable without steroids or anything like that. Yeah. Just carnation, instant breakfast, and, right. and massive amounts of tuna subs. Oh, 
I love tuna subs. Oh my gosh, canned tuna with mayonnaise. Oh, <laughs> do you like celery in it? I like anything. In and it. onion, lettuce, celery, celery, uh, lettuce, onions, tomato, onions. I love oh yeah, tomatoes. Tomato, lettuce, tomato, onion, mustard. hot pepper. Oh, hot peppers. Yeah, pickles. Oh, oh. anything. I love oil and vinegar. There's really nothing uh, you can do to but, tuna. To but I can't. I can't now. I'm a tuna snob now. Like okay. I have to have. Like I can't get Subway tuna. <laughs> no, because no. it's been sitting there, and then they have to. They have to like mix it in order for the brown shit to. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, the the no. whole the whole thing is chunk light. Yeah, is, is yeah. Just, no, it's, come on. It's like cat food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like cat yeah, food. it is. So you, so how was your first game at, um, at, on the football I, team? I, I, I dominated. I was incredible. Really? Yeah. Everybody was so much well, smaller than me. Were you popular at that, that point? All the football um, players were popular when I was. No, because I was this uh, really good student who was who was yeah. pretty shy, and and they probably wanted you because you were smart and you would remember all the plays and. Yeah, I mean that that was part of it, right? And, and also, I was easy to to recruit for college right. because I I would I had high enough SAT scores right. and they didn't have to make any kind of allowances right. and things. Yeah. And you were a tight end. And I was a tight end. Yeah, yeah. So wait, yeah, what, so a really you fun position? What do you do? You take you, wait. You block on run plays, but then when they pass, you go out for passes. And oh, okay, that's, and that's then you the run. Part. Yeah, and then when you catch it, you run. And but then my you thing, make the touchdown. My thing was to uh, almost immediately dive to the ground before anybody could get a really good oh. shot at me. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> this week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give better help a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists and you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you. Do it. Better help is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait. And then I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And better help is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today, and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. So you end up getting a scholarship to Boston College. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to mention right now that is a Jesuit school. Yes. Yes. Were there other Jews there? Um, there was one woman that I can remember, and her uh, father had played for the Celtics. Really? Yeah. His, and he was her, a Jew? And he was a Jew, Hank Finkel. Oh, yeah. Someone yeah. mentioned him to yeah. me. What a yeah. name. Yeah. And and she was another classmate. And then right. there was a, 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 a man who I um, I went to high school with. Who was Jewish and, and went to Boston College, but but it was um it was yeah you didn't you didn't were there like crosses at Boston College you you didn't what about were there like crosses in the dorm and everything no, oh, no. Right. It's, it's, Jesuits are pretty liberal yeah and, they're and, pretty cool and, yeah and I only had I I took you needed to take two religion classes but so I took Old Testament which I was a ringer right I had because you were born yes yeah. yes and then I took a, a class called Religion in America right and um I had a few priests as, as right. professors but they were excellent and, did they and try really to cool um, touch you <laughs> no, <laughs> no no um but um the the, the one 
priest that I that I became friendly with was um, an expert on uh, gambling. He was really? a statistics professor, and he was a consultant for the Massachusetts Lottery. He was a really interesting guy. He, he and he was a priest. Yeah, he was an, but he was an expert on gambling. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you think he was gay? Um, I think so many are gay and can't deal with that. Or yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Or or asexual. Yeah. Which I think is is that yeah. a, does that a category have a name? Asexual. Well, it's the A in LGBTQIA. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Which, whatever. I don't know. I, I I think that's a possibility. Yeah. So, all right. So you play. So this is where a lot of who you are manifests itself is yes. that you get there. Yeah. You're on the team. Yeah. But it's making you miserable. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Almost immediately. And yeah. you but you've signed this. You know, yeah, this deal I mean, with the, them. The, the best way I've I've learned to put it is that every practice was a a referendum on my manhood. Right. Like I, I had to prove that I was tough and aggressive and strong against the toughest, strongest. Right. So they were. So you're on this high school team where you're the biggest one, and now yeah. are you the smallest one? No, I'm. I'm not. I'm actually. Um, <coughs> Bless you. I hate those. F- I hate sneezing. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah, because you lose control. And <laughs> th- I get three to seven. At yeah, a time. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was physically comparable to all the other tight ends. I could run as fast or right. faster than all but one, and I was um, I was as strong as them. But they had been playing since they were young. Right. And they were they were real men. They were tough. Right. And and they weren't virgins. And they really wanted it. Yeah. Oh, you were a little virgin. Yeah, I was a little virgin. I mean they, what, they what, what was like what's the locker I always wondered that like what's the locker room right like? Are they so all... funny. It is? Yes. I gotta tell you, these guys, they were not great students. Right. But so quick witted. Um, especially the, the black players were so funny. I could just sit there and laugh. Um, all day long. They were so funny and the way they would um, in, insult each other and go back and forth was it was just really funny. These these were some of the funniest um, creative people I've ever been around. Did they were they abusive the at all? Students. Um, one guy was a was a bully, but it was it was interesting because um, th- I'm I'm still close with with uh, a few of the guys, but there was one guy in particular who was the quarterback of the team. Right. And he actually looks back at this one particular guy and we'll we'll go back and forth about how this one guy on our team was a, was a bully and I was like even to you the quarterback <laughs> of the team he was like yeah he made me miserable wow. he was mean to me I was like who is mean so to the wow. to the big man on campus right, right. the big man on campus right. had a bully it's, that's it a, was, it's incredible it's, uh, fascinating to me how how so, um society and right. human nature works that a uh, yeah that you, he felt bullied that he felt bullied did they ever call you a Jew or anything um, there was one guy, and yeah. it was actually very funny, and I never felt it, it came from anti-Semitism, right. and it probably did, but he <laughs> would insist on calling me gefilte. <laughs> I love that. Yes, and I Gefilta thought that was such hilarious. an obscure nickname. And it how wasn't, did he know gefilte? I have no That's idea. Hilarious. He was a hick. He really was. That, he was from like Pennsylvania yeah, or that's something. Funny. And he, but he was just so funny. And you he know would I'm going to call you Gefilte every time I see yeah. you. Oh my gosh. It made me laugh almost every time. And maybe he hated Jews, but it, I could tell he didn't hate me. Right, right. Yeah. He was always if happy to see Jews, me. If he hated Jews, he wouldn't say Gefilte. Right. It, he, it you just, know? Because it's it, too and, specific. And like his roommate would also call me Gefilte. And it, and it didn't feel like it was anti Semitism. Oh, it just felt funny. It that's just hilarious. felt funny. Yeah. So ha- you go to therapy, right? Yeah. Dr. Tom McGinnis was my therapist. Right. Yeah. And he just became my, my father from there on out. Right. It was like having this really smart, insightful right. Catholic father. And yeah. he was, um, was he a priest? No, no. And he was just the head of the counseling He was there? the head of the counseling services wow. at Boston College. I saw him. I went to a... There was this thing called the Learning Resources for Student Athletes, and and um, and the man who ran it was a really nice man. And you had to check in with him about your grades, and we right. met him during summer summer practices. And he seemed like a reasonable man, right? Like somebody I could go to with a problem. Right. And I went to him and I said, "I'm I uh, I'm really uh, unhappy. Depressed. I'm really I'm unhappy." 
and he knew this this man somehow um, as a colleague. And how because great is that? It was this man's Dr. Tom McGinnis's first. Um, I was his first client. No because way. He had come from Georgetown. Right. And I was oh. his first. Mm. Yeah. He had, um Yeah. He had come from Georgetown. I was his first. Uh, client and patient and uh, it was during the summer so I don't think he had any right. other, other people to see and I, I sat with him and it was like uh, again I'm using the word revelation a lot today but it was like wait a minute I sit here I tell you these things that I've been bottled up right, right, right. Me about my life and I've been embarrassed about right. for, for 18 years and you listen and, and you don't tell me I'm a, I'm a pussy right. or, or a homosexual right. or, or all these things and it was just it felt so good and, and he said I remember he said why don't you just quit the football right. team and, and I was just are you are you crazy Right, because you had made that your My identity. My identity yeah. is, is based around this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a really good interviewer, Judy. This is so much fun. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. This is, no, you're really good at this. Oh, I thought you were... You were. Um, no. Because I think everyone's no, sarcastic. Is, no. Wait, oh, so... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm being right, earnest. Thank you. But yeah. so... I'm mostly earnest because I feel like sarcasm. I think we're post-sarcasm now. We it's, are. That's all I do. No. That's how I grew up. I grew really? up every... Comment was her, and now with my girlfriend Elisa, yeah. she's like, "Is that sarcastic?" And I'm like, "Yes." Uh. Every my family was that. That was the only way they communicated yeah, was through I sarcasm. Got that too. Yeah, totally. I, I think it's a Jewy thing. Yeah. So, do you and think? Then, and then the undermining thing without any. I call it Jurette. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say like Tourette's. Yes, yeah, it's, Tourette's. it's not. It's not a racial slur right, or right. A swear, but it's felt. But it's like, um, uh, like I, I did the the Montreal Comedy Festival this summer, and and right. um, Howie Mandel was the was the host, right? And um, nothing impresses my my mother, but she watches AGT, right? And I thought telling her that Howie was the host mm -hmm. would impress her, and I told her Howie was the host of the show. Oh. <laughs> and what did he say? What did he think about you? And and this is true. He said he said I th I thought you were amazing. And I said he said I thought you were amazing. And she said oh he says that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I they can't give it to can't you. Can't help it. I, I don't can't help it. My I ran nine miles today. Right. How long is a marathon? Oh yeah, I yeah. I'd get a you know ninety nine on my test. Why didn't you get a hundred? And or. I remember when I did the Tonight Show the first time with Jay Leno. Really? In the 90s, I think. Mid-90s, 94, okay. 95. And, um, and, you know, it's like... It's huge. And especially because it's before the internet and everything. Yes. She so calls me up. Learn. So uh, they have so many commercials. Oh, my god! I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't, and this and, is why we're comics. Yeah, and then there was always a, can, so can he do anything for you? Yeah, What's I know. Next? What will this oh, lead wait. to? Oh, wait, you know, my mother used to always <laughs> do, and I wanted to fucking kill her. I, I got to go. I'm going to work. You getting paid? No, I'm doing oh it for free. Oh, my gosh, I'm yes. I'm doing it for free. What do they well, pay Well, I hope you. you uh, yeah. Yes. Why do they think oh. that they can ask us how much money we make? It's so obnoxious. People are so curious. Like, when you're with regular oh, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're so curious as yeah. to. Oh, yes. And then okay. it's always like. Uh, like when if they found out like yeah. when we what we get for corporates and stuff. Oh my gosh! And it's like fuck you. They you die. get up there for an hour. Yeah. You do oh, it. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. Yeah. 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 It's it's, it's unbelievable. We, At we work. Earn every you just penny. work an hour a day. I'm thinking about the days I have to work. Yes. That's all you think about all day. All I can think about, and 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 I'm processing these words right. all day long. Right. Yes. It's oh, I can't. And I there is nothing I'm not filtering. Right, it sucks. And before when I went on the road, I've also mentioned this many times because people write in. You already said that. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but I went on the road without cell phones or computers, and I used to have one suitcase that was a junk drawer. I actually today, um, I taped a TV show that I'm not allowed to talk about because they don't know when it's going to air. And they're like, bring your clarinet because I play clarinet. Oh, wow. I was in the, I was a band nerd, and so I brought the clarinet. And when I was on the road in the eighties and early, like I, we would have been such best. Friends. I know. Yeah. I would. I bring my clarinet so I could practice, yeah. you know. And on my clarinet case is a, a 
an air, you know, airline ID that I you hand fill out from Pan Am. Oh. <laughs> okay. How wow. crazy is that? All right. So, do you think? So the guy, this guy McGinnis, right? Yeah. yeah. Gives you the confidence to trust your, yeah. to trust who you are and what you're right. feeling and saying, yeah. You know. How did you quit? Like, how was it going into these coach? Like, yeah. that must have been. Well, it was. It was a, a seminal very, moment in your. It was life. very interesting because the 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 season, the regular season ended. Yeah. And um, I didn't get get better uh, as far as my depression didn't lift. So that, mm-hmm. that's when I first started um, taking antidepressants. What was your first one? Uh, it was called nortriptyline. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Pamelor was the was the yeah, brand yeah. name. Yeah, and th- and that was that was incredible. That worked, and I felt like myself. Right. Um, for the first time in in ages, and and that that was just such a great feeling. And then there were these things called the the winter workouts, in which you would get up at at five thirty in the morning, and. Th- they would set up these barrels around the concourse of the of the arena where right. guys would throw up um, because the running was so. That's brutal. what happened to Ben this morning. Yeah, it, it, it w- they really pushed you, and they they would. There was this thing one day where the where I was coming in last in the race, and the, the coach was like, "The next time you come in last, you watch the entire team run." And and at first I was like, uh, "Oh, so wait, I don't have to run?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, but then they're uh, watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so the, then I, I I applied myself and I didn't come in last. But the the um, I just I did okay during during that. And then there's another season called spring practice where right. where you um, are competing every afternoon for the next season's. Um, depth chart where you right. will, whether you'll get any playing time right. or not, and and so you're you're competing and and it's so competitive every afternoon, and there's hitting and and it's really hard. And then there's a spring game, and and who do you play against? The, the Each other, other, the other players oh, yeah, okay. on the team. There's like a, a yeah. they they divide the team up and and um, before the spring game, my my uh, therapist, Doctor McGinnis, said. Um, what are you gonna do at the end of this season? And and uh, I said uh, I'm 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 not sure. I, I you know I'll, I'll probably just uh, come back and 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 play. I don't right. I don't, don't want to lose my scholarship. I right. don't really have a choice. So it was a full scholarship. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And was your mother like I'm so proud of you? Good. Oh yeah, they were very proud yeah. of that. They were very proud of that. Yeah, when well yeah. they don't have to pay for yeah. college. It's, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to go right. there if it wasn't for the scholarship. Right. So he said, uh, we went back, back and forth, and he said, listen, I never give advice. Y- you need to quit the football team. And and because I had just accepted him as... Right. As, as, um, the, as like a, a mentor. Smart, yeah. A smart father. A mentor. I I said, okay, okay. That's then, so great. Yeah. Did it feel like you, like a release? Like, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, because I trusted this guy, right. and and I and I just I loved him, and and the only thing was that I was I was still ambivalent, right? And, and so I I prayed. I, I I've I've always had a, a very um, strange relationship with God, and, right? And that I I I will uh, ask forgiveness and, right. and apologize. Oh, I talk and just, all I'm the time. Such an Old Testament. Jew. I'm so bad because so I'm afraid like, of why God. are you doing this yes, to me? So why? Convinced I hate you. <laughs> I say I hate you, and then I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. I'll give him the yes. finger, and I'm like, why? And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Yes. I know. It's, what the fuck is that? Oh my gosh. Because when I used to stub my toe when I was acting right. up as a kid, my mother would say, see, God punished you. But that is so mental. It's like, mental. Like, they make us mental. Yes. And my mother, my father and mother were both like, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, like the, yeah. it was like, yeah. and my therapist has always tried to tell me it's not like the, like little things yeah. make me fucking crazy, yes. you know? And so, and I think that's from that. Yeah. It's a sign. Yeah. Wow. So you go in. So, so, so wait, this is before oh, okay. the spring sorry, game. Sorry. Before the spring Now, game. wait, I have a, one question that I forgot to ask before. Did your parents come to your games? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
but they weren't at this particular game, the, the spring game. And, okay. And w what happened was before the spring game, I didn't know whether I wanted to quit because the the other thing is, it's really you're kind of a celebrity on a campus, right? Like of course. that, if you if you're on the football team, and right. and and you get special meals in a special dining room, and um, it's I mean it's even more so now, but back right. then it was it was. It, it was it was pretty heavy stuff, right. and so I was going to give up that that life, and um, so I was I was ambivalent, and I prayed to God. I said, "Give me a sign." And you stopped your um, no <laughs> 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 And uh, a few plays into the game, I missed a block, and the quarterback who was this who turned out to play for the Jets and the Seahawks, no and he was way. a star. He was just right. so great. The quarterback got creamed. Um, and uh, I went to the sidelines, and I see the coach who, because they don't really talk to freshmen during the right. during the year, I hadn't really had much interaction with him. Right. He um, is coming from the other side, and there's smoke coming out right. of his ears. He's right. so angry, and he laid into me, and my lip was quivering, and oh I was God. just devastated. And I was like, and it was almost like God's. Oh, you want a sign? Oh yeah, here's, here's, a, here's the a sign. Is this sign. good enough for yeah, you? Yeah, this is good yeah. enough. This is. This is fire and brimstone. So, like, did he? Yeah. Was he abuse? Like, he he was reasonable within the context, right? Because you could have hurt the guy. I could have yeah. killed the, the guy, right? Because right. I, because I was um, I just made a, a right. horrible mental mistake, and um, and I blew it, and he was angry, and so I I went into his office that that Monday, and he. The, the wonderful thing is that the coach was apologetic. He was like, I'm right. really sorry that I blew up at you, but you... you really? Were, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Right. But knowing the guy the, the right. way I knew him, and, and he was just a beloved figure on campus and everything. He was a very decent man. Right. And um, he said, um, I apologize for blowing up at you. And I said, no, you were you had every right to do that. I, right. I could have gotten uh, that player killed. And... and, um, and I said I, I can't I can't play anymore and and he said um, he said you you uh, wh what are you gonna do you can't just just suck it up uh, right for for a few years I said I'm just not an aggressive right. person and then he mentioned this one player who was a senior he said well so and so is not aggressive and and he's on the team and I said and I said um, I didn't say this, but the thing was is that guy had never played a down. Right, right, right. I said, I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And and then he called my dad, and my dad tried to convince me to play. And then he wow. called, the, he called the therapist, and the therapist said, Really? So yeah, they really wanted you yeah, to play? Yeah, which, which is Ripley's to me because right. I, I couldn't have been more inept. Right, right, right. But I was athletic. I will say right. this, and I was a big, I was a big person. I had right. the body of an NFL player, right. but I just, I didn't have the mentality. And and the, the the therapist was really nice. He says, "Listen, I, I I stand by what I told you, but just so you know, they really want you to play on the right. team, and and you can stay." But that must have, I mean, in a way, you'd be more conflicted, but also in a way, you're flattered. I was flattered, but it was laughable. Right. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, it would it wow. would it would be like if they asked me to um, be the the dance instructor right. on Dancing with the Stars, right? Not the person that right, right? that's I'm learning. That, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm that be I was that behind in football, right? Yeah. Don't forget to tune in next week to Just Kill Me Now. Um, or, it's just kill me. Oh. Don't forget to turn uh, for part two on Just Kill Me. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just, just kill me. Now. No, no, Judy no. Gold's Just Kill Me. Just kill me now. Just, just kill me now. <laughs>